Good afternoon, folks. Um, thank you all for sticking around. We are ready for the next portion of our general session. And uh, I would like to remind everyone to please silence cell phones. When you hear someone else's cell phone ring, that is your signal to make sure that your cell phone is silenced so that you don't cause the same problem and you don't get glared at by me over there. <laughs> Our first speaker today um, is going to be Andre Philippe, who is going to talk about the Bird Internet Routing Daemon, one of the several open source routing uh, software suites that are out <coughs> available for us to use. And um, I'm very excited about hearing this, so Andre. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I said, my name is Andre Philip, and uh, I'm working for the company which is called CZ Nick, which is the administrator of the domain.cz. Uh, we, we have about a million of domains uh, in the Czech Republic, and I think for you guys who are, who are interested in technology, it might be interesting that we have about 40% of them signed by the NSEC, which is probably one of the highest penetration uh, among the CCTLEs. Uh, but uh, it, it sounds strange that somebody from the domain registry is coming to talk about routing thing. The, the reason is that the company is not just focused on the domain uh, itself. We have a very large R&D department, which is called Seasoning Labs. And we do a lot of projects that are for the good of the internet. So Bird um, is one of them, but we have several others. Um, some of them are locally focused. Some of them are uh, internationally focused. So. Examples are, for example, the DNSSEC plugin for many browsers like Firefox, uh, Chrome, and Internet Explorer. So it's the way how you can visualize where the domain uh, on which the web pages are uh, supports the DNSSEC and whether the validation is correct or not. Uh, Dane Patrol, another thing that uh, helps the uh, deployment of the Dane protocol. And one of the latest software projects, which is called Not DNS. It's pretty efficient, very quick, uh, authoritative DNS server. So, and, and there is more stuff on, on the web pages of, if you are interested in our work, check labs.nic.cz. But back to the BIRD, um, uh, it's quite old project. It, we started with a couple of friends that um, 15 years ago, uh, and currently CZNIC is supporting the project. Um, is there anybody who has no idea what BIRD is? Can you raise your hands? There are some people, okay, so uh, I don't think we have time for, for introducing BERT, but I, I would like to be brief. So it's internet routing demo, so it's open source implementations of internet routing protocols. Uh, probably you may have, you, you may know Quagga, which is sort of a similar project on the same topic. Uh, we do implement uh, protocols like BGP, OSPF, and RIP within, in their IPv4 and IPv6 variants. Uh, what's different from the other projects, we, we really focus on the speed and efficiency, so we are really fast, efficient, we do not uh, consume a lot of resources, and we have very different approach in the configuration and especially the filtering language, so we believe it's more powerful, uh, especially the filtering languages because you can use variables, you can use functions, so the configuration may look a little bit like a programming code, but um, not really, uh, and the reason why we chose this, this approach is that uh, the, the filtering language is usually uh, translated to some bytecode that uh, uh, has a lot of binary trees or some st structures that really decrease, decrease the time complexity of the, of the problem. So that's why the filtering language is very quick and the interpretation of, of that is very quick, which is really important in some environments like, for example, uh, internet exchange points, uh, et cetera, so where you have a lot of peers and a lot of routing tables. Um, another difference uh, from the other projects is we support multiple routing tables, so you may have a more, more than one routing tables, and every protocol instance can be connected to different one, and if you have operating system that supports multiple forwarding tables, you, you, can, you can synchronize uh, those things together. So. Uh, but you don't have to, you can just keep it as, as a routing information base which is not propagated anywhere. So this daemon can, can act as a multiple routers, route reflectors, uh, um, and so on in, in, in a single binary. Um, and 
another thing which is interesting is a pipe protocol. Uh, it's not a real routing protocol. Its, its main goal is just to connect two routing tables and do some, some filtering inside. So that is way how those uh, multiple in in instances of the routing protocol can communicate together. Uh, and introduce this uh, project at Nanoc uh, 48. So if, if you're really interesting, look at there and, and you may see another things that, that, that may be interesting for you. Uh, so now I will focus just on the things that are added since, uh, major, uh, si since Nanoc 48. And of course, just the major additions, the, the main features. Uh, big area and uh, something we are really concentrating on is BGP. As, as I said, BIRD is run by many internet exchange points as a route server, so that's why BGP is the crucial for us. Uh, and a special filtering side of it, so we improved the community list matching and extended communities. Uh, as, as, you, as you know, there is a lot of uh, AS uh, numbers higher than 65,000, so that's why we need extended communities to filter those um, AS or to do community-based signaling. Uh, we added uh, Route, uh, route origination authorization support, uh, which might be used for, for our PKL or stuff like that. Uh, and one thing I will discuss more widely, secondary route exports, so I, I will keep it as it is. And another thing, TTO security. Uh, again, I think it's uh, RFC 5802 or something like that. So it's, uh, uh, it's again, thing how to improve the, the security of the BGP sessions. Um, new additions that are not related directly to, um, uh, to BGP, we added IPv6 rotor advertisements. It was requested by some people who use BERT in uh, very tiny devices like um, uh, running, for example, OpenWRT uh, distribution. So they really want to keep the number of binaries and, and libraries as low as possible. So, so that's why we included this in BERT. Uh, one thing that uh, was requested by people who have more configuration files is uh, include clause, so you can include more files into the main configuration file. Uh, uh, reconfiguration timeout, another thing I will, uh, I will discuss briefly later on. Uh, OSPF, uh, not so stubby areas. Uh, in case you are um, OSPF fan and, and, and you need this. Uh, then we also introduced the multi-path support uh, for OSPF and, and static protocols. Uh, another uh, huge change in the code we had to make. Uh, protocol templates, I have some examples, and also uh, import and export uh, limits. Again, I, I have some examples later. And uh, most importantly, BIRD was deployed on many new places, on, on new installed on many new exchange points especially. So uh, here's the list of, of exchange points that run BERT as a route server. Uh, not just exchange points, there is, there is one more. There's um, Netflix who is running BERT in their open connect appliances. Uh, so as you, you may see, BERT is run on, the, on all the major exchange points in the world, especially the biggest ones like uh, AM6 DK links uh, based in Europe. Uh, it, this is not, of course, this is of course not a complete list. There is much more places and much more companies running it, but I just chose some logos that you might recognize. Um, there is a, a lot of local ISPs that are using it for in their software-based uh, routers, and of course my company is, for example, using BERT uh, for the uh, DNS Anycast nodes. Uh, so that's all the thing that the BERT may be uh, applied. So now back to the features. Uh, I mentioned the uh, reconfiguration timeout, something you probably know from the commercial router vendors. Uh, uh, here's the thing, you, you remotely try to recon, uh, reconfigure the, the routing daemon, but uh, unfortunately you may cut the branch, you may cut the path. Uh, uh, I think that's very familiar from many of the system administrators here. Uh, so that's why we implemented the timeout so if you do not confirm uh, the configuration in certain time period, uh, then uh, this process is reversed and, and the uh, old configuration is reloaded back. So this is the example. If you don't do that, uh, BERT says that uh, it's expired and starts undo. And if you confirm it, um, the, uh, old, the new configuration stays forever or for the, at least to the next configuration. 
Uh, so that's one thing. Um, another, which I hope might be interesting for you, is ROA support. We added um, basic support of ROA tables. Uh, and uh, there is one thing uh, that's sort of new in BERT. Uh, BERT's command line interface is usually uh, for displaying information. It has never been meant for the configuration. In case of ROA, we, we a little bit change uh, this philosophy. So ROA tables can be filled either statically from a config file, or you can use it command line interface to add new ROAs. And those ROAs, of course, can be fed from RPKI, IRR database, and, and stuff like that. So again, something that may improve your filtering. Uh, and uh, those array tables can be match in the, matched in the filters. So if you receive some, some prefix, you can match it using array tables. And, and there are three possibilities how we can react to this. And here's an example of, of um, a single line array table. Um, another thing, the route limits. Uh, it's more general approach because it's not just BGP related. But I think for BGP, this is probably the most important thing. Uh, so uh, it's usually the number of uh, routes received from or sent to a peer or protocol uh, can be limited. And there are four types of different reactions. You can either send a warning that the limit, uh, the limit was reached and, and uh, let the operator to react. Or um, uh, the, the routing demo can block. Uh, so that means that. All, the res all routes received above the limit are ignored and they are not propagated into the uh, routing table. And of course, you can restart the protocol or disable it. So uh, it's probably something you, you know from the other vendors as well. Uh, protocol templates, uh, that's uh, again uh, something to make uh, the administrator's life easier. Uh, you can define a template of any protocol. I chose BGP as an, as an example, but might be from different protocols as well. Uh, you, you define certain variables and attributes of the protocol. And if you use this template for a, some new protocol instance, uh, those attributes are inherited. But as, as usually, they are inherited, but it can be modified again, so if you have some, some feature set, some list of attributes that are common for all your peers. You just put it into the template, and then you uh, save some uh, a few lines of your configuration file. So again, very handy, especially for people that are dealing with uh, route servers that have you know hundreds of, of peers. Uh, this uh, you, you can make any change, just changing a single line, which is uh, very nice and, and very usable. Um, Extended community lists, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it from, from the screen, it's quite small, but um, uh, it couldn't fit the, the display. Uh, we, we did a lot of changes to, um, again, to implement extended community, and here's an example from, uh, that is very common in exchange points, uh, is the way how you signal that you don't wanna propagate your roads to a, a certain, uh, Peer, uh, exchange point member or, or certain peer. Uh, so if you are sending your routes to, to route server, you can add some community that says what's gonna happen with those routes. And you can either exclude uh, some, uh, some peers, some, some autonomous systems, or uh, you can deny for all and include some others. And, and this is way how this is implemented in, in BERT. If you are using other route servers, for example, Quagga based, this uh, you have to write a lot of thousands of of lines, basically some lines for every every the peer. So this is very simple using BERT. It's it's really compressed, and um, uh, this this implementation show how you can deal with both ex normal communities and extended communities as well. So basically, if there is community with zero and, and the peer is, then the, the route is not propagated. If, if there is something like uh, my, my autonomous system, autonomous system of the, of the route server, and the peer is, the route is propagated and so on. So this is the way how the filtering works in BERT. And in, in, in case of extended communities, uh, they are dual checking, so it's, it's either one or, or, or the second one. 
Um, and uh, with the route filtering in internet exchange point, there is one thing uh, which is connected uh, to, to this. Uh, uh, and uh, that's a common approach in the, in the routing protocols. Normally, if you, if you import some routes, you keep them in the routing information base. And if you want to export them, and there is some export filter, and uh, the best route, which is in the routing table, is, is matched and it's probably filtered out, then this route is not exported. It's, it's normal behavior of many routers because they export just the best routes, usually. But uh, route server is not a router, so um, uh, there is a possibility to export even the, the second best options or something like that because it, it, those routes doesn't go to, f uh, to forwarding base, so uh, it, it may behave a little bit differently. And the problem is if you have uh, an exchange point, a custom of two different uh, exchange point members, and one of them is for some reason filtered out by, by you, then you don't see the second path because it was the second optimal path. So that's why this is filtered out. Um, uh, when we start talk about this, uh, we uh, prepared some solution with BERT uh, that is used, uh, that use, uses the, the pipe protocol, the, the unique feature of BERT, and we create a configuration that can be represented by this picture. Basically, uh, every, uh, peer of, of every autonomous system is connected to some local routing table. So everything that is exported from those uh, peers is, goes to this local routing table, then is connected by a pipe protocol, which is the, I don't know, it's red color uh, thing. And uh, there is filtered, and the filter goes to the master table, and then it's distributed back to all of them. Uh, and in those red boxes, the filtering is done. Uh, pipe protocol is not a routing protocol, so it's just a synchronization protocol be between tables. So this also exported the, 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 the second best or even less best route, so this filtering was not, not applied. The problem of this solution was that we had a, a lot of routing table, uh, so every route that was inserted by, uh, by some peers went to all the routing tables and, and it has uh, squared complexity. So the, the route was on many places and the consumption of memory was rising pretty quickly. Uh, so th that's why we introduced uh, a new way how to deal with that and that's the you know, protocol option called secondary, uh, which uh, allows the second best router to be exported and uh, there was one internal thing which is not important, but just in case you will configure it, uh, all the routing table has to be sorted. Uh, the problem is that we just kept the best optimal route and then list of other routes. Now with this sorted uh, clause, uh, it's also sorted the list, so no big, no big deal. And it's a little bit slower when, they, uh, when the routes are inserted into routing table, but it's just tiny. Uh, and uh, uh, this allowed us to make very simple setup, which is, which is easy, that there is one single master table that all the peers are connected to, filtered before the routes enter the master routing table, and uh, every route is just in the memory just once, so it's very simple. Uh, th there was one small issue if you wanted to see um, the, the routes before filtering, you could look into those local routing tables because they, they were unfiltered. Now you don't see the filtered rows, so that's why we, we introduced uh, another configurations option called keep, uh, import keep filter and show route filter, so you can see what those guys are sending to you that were filtered out, probably some rubbish or something uh, you didn't want to see. Uh, but just in case you want to check what those guys are sending to you. So this is, uh, oh sorry, this is the new approach how, how the route servers work. And, um, uh, this is an example how it looks in configuration, as you can see, uh, again, using templates. Uh, this is a definition of uh, a route uh, peer in the exchange point. So you, uh, it's a route server client. You don't interpret uh, communities, uh, I mean those mandatory communities, because you are not a router, so you, you resend them freely to the others. And then uh, in the configuration, in the protocol instance, you just define import filter, export filter, and, and that's all. So that's basically the part of the configuration uh, of BERT uh, if it, it's working as a, as a route server in exchange point. So you can see it's very, pretty easy. Uh, what was the impact? Uh, we have a, uh, 
in, in, in our local exchange point in Prague, Nick CZ, we have a two route servers, two birds. One is running on Linux and one on FreeBSD. The, the reason we are using just bird is that the others are really not performing really well. So uh, we had to switch to two birds, which is not a little bit unfortunate, but we don't really have any other daemon that is able to, uh, to perform in this environment. Uh, we have about 30,000 IPv6 routes uh, with uh, uh, 120 peers, roughly, and uh, 7,000 IPv6 routes with about 100 peers. And the memory consumption was decreased by one-seventh or one-quarter one in case of IPv6. So it, it was significant memory consumption decrease. And it's even more important for the um, larger players with, with more peers and more more routing, uh, more routing, uh, pref uh, more prefixes, because as I said, this is uh, a square issue. So uh, if those numbers rise, it, it rises by, by square. So uh, that's it. That, that are the new features, and we are working on some others. Um, first of all, um, we work on lightweight client. Uh, it was re requested by people from OpenWRT. The current command line interface we are using uh, depends on some of the libraries like uh, LibHistory and Cruises and so on. And that's something you don't want to have on tiny device using OpenWRT. Uh, so we implemented it. It's implemented. It's, it's not released yet, but it's done. A lightweight client for those uh, guys. Uh, we are working on um, BGP ad pathing. Uh, I hope you are familiar with that. Uh, we also, uh, because we had many requests from the users that they don't have any uh, looking glass. The problem of birds that it's completely different animal than the others, uh, mammals and birds, you know. And um, the it was uh, there was there is no looking glass uh, that was compatible with Quagga and Cisco uh, working with birds. So that's why we decided to make a universal looking glass uh, that will solve the issue. I have some pictures of it. Uh, and uh, uh, something we are working now, and it's going to be um, done in, in, in this year, uh, we integrate IPv4 and IPv6 court, uh, something I didn't mention, but uh, uh, it is quite interesting. Uh, BERT is written in one source code, and if you compile without any options, it's just IPv4. If you compile it with IPv6 enabled option, it's just IPv6. Uh, so if you want to run a route server or something, you need to run two binaries on a single machine. Uh, um, and of course, it has one limitation that you, for example, can't do a multi-protocol BGP using, using BERT. So that's something we would like to change. So we are working on integration that one binary will support both protocols in once. Uh, we hope that it will not be necessary, but it is. Um, and after that, we can work on ISIS because it's completely different routing protocol that is sort of, um, uh, it's different from OSPF or OSPFv3, so it, it, it needs both protocol families to be properly implemented. So uh, that's something we are working on, um, and most important thing, uh, your, your feedback is very welcome. So if you use BERT and you need some new feature or you have some issue with that, Please don't hesitate to contact us. We are really looking to, to hear some feedback. Um, now to the universal looking glass. Um, so it's looking glass. You probably know what that means. Supports multiple routers. Currently, we do support BERT, Cisco, and Juniper. And we are working on some others. So especially if you need it, just send us an email. We can work on that. Uh, it's not very different from the other looking glasses, except the fact that it has uh, the path visualization. So if you want to see the path from the route service to you, there is a very uh, fancy um, graph that shows you the optimal path and the other passes uh, from uh, the looking glass to you. So that's, you know, it looks nice. I, know, I don't know if it's really useful, but uh, if you are a fan of graphs, you can use it. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. So um, one thing, BERT is stable, widely deployed, especially by exchange points, but not just by them. Uh, we have some new features, which can save you resources and, and memory in your installations. And uh, we are working on some uh, new other thing. So and your feedback is very welcome. So uh, in case you have really, you need something, you need something that other routing demos doesn't perform, 
let us know. And that's all. Thank you very much. Anyone have questions? Okay, thanks.